he's unique, he's special, and you don't see a lot of those kids. He was definitely, you know, wanting to be out there. You know, he, you could definitely see he had a passion. I used to see him out there with his father just on the range hitting balls, and uh, he was always talented, even as a very young child. I started going to tournaments with him when he was, you know, seven or eight, but it really wasn't until, you know, he started bringing home all these trophies and, and started filling up his bookcases with trophies that we were just kind of like, you know, he's something special. He won his first AJGA when he was 13 up in the north, up in Indiana. And then later on that year, he won a AJGA, the Junior All-Star Invitational. I think along that time, uh, it appeared that, you know, with, with the continued progress, he would be able to compete at the highest level with AJGA. All throughout 2015, I was, I was so close so many times, and I, I was really, I was playing well, but I just could never really, you know, put it all together and get the job done. And so, when I went to Rolex, uh, it was just, you know, everything really just started clicking. And he went 66 holes, I think, mm -hmm. without a bogey. You know, it was like an out-of-body experience. I mean, it was just a lot of fun. Everything just came together that week, and um, it, it definitely showed in the score. And uh, really happy to get my first invitational win, you know, right there at, uh, at Crosswater. Really propelled me for what was next to come in the summer. Barbary's got one 26 and has got to be feeling good about himself right now. He's on a roll. This is a good looking shot just right on the flag. One of the shot. Philip had his nine, Andrew had his nine, and Philip consequently was two down, uh, you know, at the, at the 18th hole. And then, of course, the first nine of the second, 18, uh, the second round. Uh, Andrew began playing. You know, I really just told myself, you know, to have confidence and, you know, realize how good I am and, you know, just don't, don't let anything, you know, stop what I, what I want to do. You just want him to finish respectively, I guess. But then, you know, when things start turning around, I mean, your excitement and your, you know, like, well, maybe, maybe this hole, maybe, maybe, you know, another win on this hole and the excitement just builds. He's just so full of comebacks, you know, like, you can, if, if there's one hole left and you, you're one up and you, you think that like, you, you know, you got it, you know, not against Philip. Even though I wasn't there, we were watching on TV, you know, I was screaming at the TV. I could see my mom and my sister and my um, dad. It's just, it's miraculous to see that he has grown up into the young man that he is. I've done two of these the last two years in a row, so it's, uh, you know, there's obviously something in the water. I don't know if I'll ever see this much talent at one time in this town in my lifetime. One of my best friends, Philip Barbary, showed me a Bible verse after I got home that's since become my favorite. It says, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. LSU's always been a part of our entire family for as long as I can remember. And um, to see my brother not necessarily follow in my footsteps but want the same thing that I wanted um, is so cool to see. And to be able to go down to LSU and, and be with uh, Sam and Nathan and Carter uh, it's just it's really really exciting because we've never really been on a on a team before besides maybe at the AJGA Wyndham Cup. You know, he's a very humble kid, and uh, you know, he can even do that to any of us that we play with every day because he's you know that that far ahead and playing that good of golf right now. But uh, you don't see that when he's doing anything, even when he's on the golf course. You don't see that he's a real humble person. I think that the drive that he has to be the best is something that it's all on his own. It's something that he has from within. I think we each kind of have our own little niche and our parents have kind of taught us to, um, you know, find what we're good at and, you know, really practice and, and to, to the point where we're able to excel in what we do. He told me, like, he, he doesn't have to play golf to be happy. You know, God makes him happy and I think that's one of the biggest inner drives he has. 